Whatever I passed through in their hands wasn't easy. To a point, I even had to run away from the from home at the age of 17 years. I still didn't even have my ID. It was tough for me. I remember there was a, like, let me like flash back a little before my father, my fa when my father died. So this guy was violent to me. He used to beat me to the point. The last time I saw him, he actually stabbed me. The mark is actually... I used to feel different from my age mate mm -hmm. till, till I saw Ajuma. Yeah. Ajuma Sanya and I was like, okay, <laughs> let the, all these people speak. But I'm unique. Okay. I am, I am like, I can literally stand in town and I can see everything like going on. So, it, it kind of disturbed me with the relationships, I won't lie. Okay. Because some men feel insecure. Yeah. Some men feel intimidated by me. They like me, but they are, and, and then I'm always a... Inakuwaja tuangwa nguvu, mina ito presenter Ali, your entertainment PA, and by the way, the A is always for amazing. Siku zote natia bidi kwa kikisho kwa mba na kuletea stories tofauti, and of course, kama umekuwa kizungumu ka sana kwenye mitandao tofauti ya kijamii, that is TikTok, Instagram, ni naimani kwa mba hii sura so geni kwa kwa. There's this lady who's very amazing, who's been walking in the streets and turning heads, and a jita, the queen of the streets, aka Lupita Nyakisumo. Mambo Vipi, how are you doing? I'm good. Uh, maybe you can introduce yourself. Yes, Naitwa Lupita Nyakisumo. I'm a street model. Yeah. Yes. The queen of the streets. The queen of the streets. Tested, approved and trusted. Is, th is this a title that you gave yourself or is this a title that people actually gave you? The streets crowned me the queen. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, maybe before we talk about, you know, uh, you turning heads in the streets of Nairobi, uh, maybe we can talk about where did it all start? Lupita Nyakisumo. Oh, so modeling, generally, I started modeling in my standard eight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I've been doing modeling for 11 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, in class eight, it was just having fun and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, in form two, I was the Miss Nyabisawa mm -hmm. in my school, my high school. Mm -hmm. From four, I was the Miss Culture. Mm -hmm. So when I finished, I ventured uh, into runway modeling. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, runway modeling professionally, like it's now seven years since I started. Mm -hmm. So runway, runway was so crowded for me. Like I wasn't getting what I wanted. My vision was being limited. So I decided uh, to be my own brand. Yes. Yeah, so the name Lupita Nyakisumo, as I was growing up, uh, people used to say I'm her look-alike, like everyone used to tell me, oh, Lupita, Lupita, but I was still young, I didn't even know that, okay, I knew there was a Lupita Nyong'o somewhere, yeah. but I didn't know that, how she looked like, because I didn't have a phone, I was still young to have phones, at least my grandmother said so. Yeah. <laughs> so when I finished my high school, I started googling, googling this lady, and yes, the resemblance was striking, yeah. So it, it, it continued like that, uh, till a day I was shooting my street content, and then I was actually done shooting, so I was just going to change. So as I was going to change, somebody just started shouting, Lupita, Lupita. Wow. Yeah, I w okay, I was using the name Lupita Nyakisumo, but it hadn't like caught the attention of many. Yes, yes. So I was like, okay, I was confused. Mm -hmm. Within the spur of like five minutes, over 3,000, 4,000 people were around me, surrounding me, like taking pictures, videos and everything. Everyone was calling me Lupita, Lupita. I didn't even know what to do. Yeah. Like I was panicking and everything. And so after that, it was my moment of glory. I was in Eldoret. Yeah. So the Eldoret people are the ones who actually crowned me the queen of the streets okay. yeah so coming out of, of that place i went and sat down i brought myself to a meeting i said okay this is time that uh, this is the time that the lord wants me to serve he feels i'm ready to serve so yeah i embraced that name and i know that i am lupita the second wow. yeah that's amazing but then one would uh, actually ask you there are many things that you know people find passion in uh, people try to you know do uh, while growing up why modeling what was that uh, striking thing that made you fall in love with modeling when i was still young let me first start uh, by okay rest in peace my father and my mother my father really believed in me yeah when i was still young i used to see esther wahome modeling yeah. she was a model at that time i was when i was still very young and i used just to after school i used just to sit and watch her model she was so beautiful so i wanted to be like her i asked my father can i really be a queen and she told me and my father sorry he told me that i will be a queen someday so this is like me honoring also the the request like the father's wish 
my father's wish, but I'm also doing it for me because I wanted to, to be a queen, but I didn't know what to do with the crown. But growing up, the, my, the challenges that I passed through life made me want to help people. Like, you know, as a model, you have to be somebody who is passionate. You have to be a people's lover. You have to be somebody that your heart breaks when you see any kind of situation going on. So, yeah, the things that I passed through in life made me want to be a model and to fulfill my destiny on this world. If you wouldn't mind, maybe you can uh, talk to us about some of the things that you passed through. Okay, I didn't grow with my mother and father. I never got to meet my mom, by the way. But my father died when I was in Standard Five. So I started living with my relatives. Oh my goodness, it wasn't easy for me. Extended family, it was tough. I had to... But anyway, I won't say that they mistreated me because they knew better. Maybe I was still young, I didn't know better at that point. But anyway, I appreciate the fact that they brought me f uh, from, the things that I passed through, the painful things that they did to me. I've forgiven them. I've forgiven them from the bottom of my heart. They're still my family. But whatever I passed through in their hands wasn't easy. To a point I even had to run away from, the, from home at the age of 17 years. I still didn't even have my ID. It was tough for me. I remember there was a, like, let me like flash back a little before my father, my fa when my father died, it was very tough for me to a point I even had to fetch firewood like maca, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I used to cut trees to make even uh, maca. So that By yourself? Eat. Yes. I go to the forest, burn trees so that we can at least get something to eat. I go and sell the maca and then we get something to eat. It wasn't easy. And then it also continued when I ran away from home. I first started with uh, singing, I ran away to, and went and settled in a studio. So in that studio I could no longer stay there because that was a business place. Yeah. So they kicked me out of that place. So I went to a mini hotel, started, you know, this, this little kibandas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used to wake up at five. I cook tea from Django people, mm -hmm. naspin chapati, mm -hmm. my friend. It wasn't easy. So Four kgs of chapati alone. alone. Yes, when they come to to take breakfast by around eight nine there, yes, yes. yeah. When they leave, I wash the utensils. I even used to unajua this three meko something. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I used to cook ugali seven kgs myself on that meko just so I could eat. So it they were not paying you. It wasn't even for the salary. It was just so I could eat. Wow. Yeah, so I used to. It was. It was. It wasn't easy at that you point. Were very young at the, you were very young at that I wasn't time. Even eighteen yet. So, but she was paying me something little. She was paying me a little something. But anyway, I appreciated the fact that uh, I was eating breakfast, lunch, and supper at her place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when I got out of that place, I also recall a point. I was even a house help, living house help. Mm -hmm. I even had to be a mama fua at some point. In Kisumu at that time. Yeah, when I was still in Kisumu. Okay, okay. So uh, at some point too, I also, I, I was homeless. I even didn't have somewhere to sleep. I even slept on a veranda. It was so painful for me. To a point even the friend, so it, now, things went from, from, worse, from bad to worse for me. Like, it hasn't been easy. A man also here and there, you're asking for opportunities. They want to, you know. Get favors? Yeah, they want this kind of sexual favors. So it, it wasn't just easy for me generally, so to a point I even had to run to Nairobi. So when I, when I came to the big city in Nairobi, a friend of mine hosted me. So when she hosted me, like, I didn't know that she actually had other intentions for me. Yeah. So when I didn't, uh, we didn't agree on her terms, she, she sent me away. So the only person that I knew in Nairobi at that time was my baby daddy. So my baby daddy hosted me with a pure heart, I thought. Mm -hmm. So after hosting me, it, <laughs> he insisted that we had to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So our baby came, my son. Anyway, I'm happy. I'm a mother. My son is five now. Mm -hmm. So my son came. And then after, after I, I conceived my son, it was now even toughest. Because he, I would now go like without food and I'm in a man's house. You can imagine. <laughs> yeah, he used to leave me without food. He was even violent towards me. To a point, he almost even killed me. Were you guys like dating before? We weren't even dating. Just like somebody is coming and telling you, okay, my intentions with you, I like you and stuff. We, I, I even had Sikwani uh, may give my consent yes, to the relationship yes. yet. But now because I, I, wouldn't, I didn't want to go back to that situation where I once slept on a veranda, I just said, okay, let me just... Which I, I don't encourage any other lady to do in such kind of a thing. Even if you're homeless or anything, don't, don't do such a thing. It, it's, 
it really ruined me, my self-esteem and stuff at some point. So this guy was violent to me. He used to beat me to the point. The last time I saw him, he actually stabbed me. The mark is actually on my mouth. It was sealed. He stabbed me to a point where if you could funua my mouth heavy, so he hit me with something and then I fainted. When I fainted after like two hours and I was like, hey, what was happening? Because he actually thought he killed me. So he sent the agent to come and check if I was still alive. So the agent came, came and, and the agent then woke me up and she was like, hey, Ms. Chana, what are you doing? I was lying lifeless on the floor and Damu was all over my shoulder. He even thought that he killed me. So immediately the woman advised me, the agent advised me to go and take a P3. I took a P3 and uh, the police station referred me to go and uh, get treatment. So I've been a single mother from that point. He actually isn't even taking responsibility of his son. But until I, now? Until now. But I appreciate the fact that at least that was my motivation. My son was my motivation because I was like, okay, now I can't give up. If I give up, what will become of my son is looking up to me for basic needs, for luxury needs and all that. And now that made me to embrace life differently. Yeah, so I continued with my modeling and stuff. Now I had something that I wanted to change because at some point the way I lacked food and somewhere to, to live, I looked at Kenya and at times I would watch documentaries of Turkana people. They were really suffering. So I always wanted to change the living situations of people of Turkana because right now, okay, I'm not where I want to be, but at least I'm not sleeping outside. I have all the meals I want. I have all luxury needs that I want. So I just, I just want to change the lives of these people because it's so frustrating when I see a little child dying of hunger. I see a little child, I mean, looking like a skeleton, you know. I don't feel, I don't feel happy on my side that I'm sleeping in a decent house and somebody's child somewhere is suffering. So that, that encouraged me to, to want to even give food to the people, give water, like I, I wanted to start projects of uh, giving, uh, to make sure that there are water tanks in Turkana, to make sure that uh, I can be delivering food to Turkana on a monthly basis. Because if we look at the ratio of every county, they're the ones suffering the most. Not that I'm from Turkana, I'm Luo. But I want to, I want to, to be able to impact something to the people who are, are experiencing this thing the most. So I want to be able to to deliver food to the Turkana people like per month to be on a program that I can be taking food to them, food supplies. And uh, the girl child from there, because I also know problems, the way I also suffered to a point that I had to move in with a guy I didn't even love or anything. Other women from, other little girls from Turkana might be forced to early marriages and they might be forced to even circumcision, even, you know, betrothed and betrothing and other stuff. So I want to be able to even talk to the girls and tell them, don't be like me. I want people to learn from me. You know, I don't want them to be like me. And you know, maybe what if I died when my baby daddy tried to beat me? What if I died? So don't don't succumb to anything. I'd rather you just even be just a housemaid, even just to wash clothes and just get you a hundred per day. But you are safe. Yeah. So I want to encourage the little girls. I want to make them to understand the fact that no matter where you come from or whatever you do, your dreams are valid and you will get there. And also on the same point, I also want to make sure that uh, the men from Turkana, if I can bring them to the big city, at least we can have like something like a performer that they will be applying for jobs. So even if they relocate from Turkana, they come to Nairobi, get something to do so that when their women have food and their children are, em their lady, their lady children are empowered, they can also be sending something nice home yeah. yeah to take care of their needs many people would actually ask uh, you know um, and they all, and all, and also many people say you know charity begins at home yeah. so someone would actually wonder why uh, turkana not kisumu so kisumu people know that they are okay but turkana is, is the is 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 worse like livestock 500,000 livestock dying just like that there's no even water kisumu people have kiwasko <laughs> some of people, true, some yeah. people have kiosko and, and they, they are not doing so bad but Turkana people are just for them to even see food like this it takes a lot of money so yeah I'm Nyakisumo but I want to change I left home to change home wow. and uh, one of the things that you mentioned actually off camera is uh, that right now you are also doing you know uh, projects for the children's homes tell us a little bit about it 
Yeah, so for now I'm working with the mini modeling agencies. Yeah, so they organize what they do. They organize the the visits, so I become like their brand ambassador. So after they come up with something and they and then they tell me, they tell they let me know after they are done with it, so that I see where to come to. I tell them, okay, where have you reached so far with this? And then we plan children's home visits. Well, I'm actually even uh, there is this uni creatives. They're called uni creatives. They are amazing children. I also want I also promise to support them. They are career talent modeling wise because. I saw the, when I saw those little children, I saw myself. Yeah. And when I was coming up, when my daddy was telling me you're gonna be a queen, I didn't even have anyone believing in me. So I want to hold those little children's hands and be able to to make them rise to somewhere because they they actually come from humble backgrounds. Yeah. So through this modeling stuff and uh, charity, whatever, I know I will have something for them too. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Let's go a little bit back also to where. I personally first saw you and that was on TikTok, you know, you working up or around archives and the confidence was astonishing and everyone was just turning to just look at, you know, who's this lady working. What gave you that confidence to walk, you know, in the street? You know, many people cannot even do that. Hey, it's tough. <laughs> it's, not, it's not easy, by the way. At times I even get insulted and stuff, but anyway. How I wish these people insulting me knew my purpose for that. They think I'm just maybe showing off my pretty dark skin or my calves or anything. But they do not know what I'm, why I'm actually doing what I'm doing. So the, the insults and the whatever I take them, so sometimes I, I won't lie, others hurt me. Because I'm like, this, this person that is even, um, you, know, you never know. You can, you can be despising somebody or something, but even no matter how rich or whatever you are, but you need people. Yeah, so maybe somebody might be saying, okay, maybe she's doing this for Turkana people, me I'm okay, yeah. but you never know of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Maybe I might even sponsor their children someday. Yeah, so I don't, I don't, I don't uh, mind about that. I just go home when I face such things, I go and go on my knees and I tell God, God, you had. Wow. They told me this, you had. So make it, make it make sense for me because as a human being, I cannot do this without you. So it's always been God just giving me strength, always. If you don't mind, uh, you know, sharing, what are some of the hurtful comments that probably you've seen online or someone you've heard people saying? Okay, they say I'm as tall as a rope. They say I'm Shaolin. They say I'm because a giant. Yeah, they, okay. also, they also say I'm a giant. Mm -hmm. They even say I'm not beautiful, but it's okay. Not everyone knows good things when they see, so you can't even, even if, you, if, no matter what you do in this world, even if you just sell ice cream, people will not like you, so. So haters are also helping me uh, to make this, because once you hate me, you're going to tell somebody. And when you tell that somebody and then that somebody comes and starts talking me, they will see, okay, I don't see why this other person was hating on this lady that is innocently doing her stuff. So yeah, TikTok, uh, basically I'm using it uh, for to get the, the platform. I want to reach out to brands and companies. Like, imagine just walking up to maybe Mama Ida or something and just telling her, Mama Ida, this is what I want to do. They want, I, I will even need an appointment for that. But to, if, you, if you look at even Marwa Music Awards, uh, thanks to, so much to Obina, he made it possible. He, all, he gave me the recognition and Mama Ida recognized me and she was very happy with what I was doing. And I'm very opportunistic that, um, I'm very positive, sorry, that uh, I know one day I'll meet her and I will sit down with her and I will share with her my vision for the girls because I also know that she has passion for the girls. I would also like to meet uh, people like Akode because I've seen what Akode is also doing for Turkana. Mm -hmm. I would also want to meet uh, Akode too and Mama Ida and also other NGOs that, want, that work with charity. I want to be able to be their brand ambassador to be able to make these things move. So I can't do that when I'm off the media. They, I have to give them, I have to show them what I can do so that uh, they can come to me and tell me either way, Nyakisumo, we have been seeing what you are doing and we want to support you with this. If we give you this amount or if we, if we do this for you, what are you able to to do with it? I, I Through the interviews that I'm also doing, at least be, when they approach me now, they are sure this is what I want to do. So they will now come with me with the idea of, let's make it work. Wow. Yeah. Apart from the negative comments now that you've actually seen, I'm sure you've seen some positive. Talk to us about them. What do people say? What are nice things that nice people say things. about you? Black beauty, mm -hmm. melanin. Mm -hmm. For the few people that have interacted with me offline, mm -hmm. 
they know that I have a kind heart. Yeah. I, I look very strong outside, but, but when you meet me and sit down with me, mm -hmm. you will realize that mm -hmm. I have it in me. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I always just have that. I'm just a people's person. Even if you don't know me, you'll just like me. From afar, you will think I'm the tigress, but when you come close, you'll realize that I'm actually the sweetest person you can ever know. So the few people that maybe, you know, they have been coming to my DMs for maybe support. Mm -hmm. I can't support all of them, but the few that I've supported, they say when the, the right hand gives, let the left not, no. Yeah. So the few people that have been able to support, they go out there and tell people of the goodness, or the kindness I've been giving them. And I can only say it's all for the, for the, the, the name of the Lord to be given glory at the end of the day. Because it's the Lord that gave me. I lacked once. But if, if, I can, if the Lord can use me to bless, why not? Wow. Yeah. You somehow talked about, uh, you know, people talking about, uh, you are saying that you are very tall. Uh, how tall are you? 6'5". Uh, are you confident or do you feel like you are in a way insecure about your height? Growing up, it wasn't easy for me because I was like two steps in front of my, my peers. Like even even shoes, <laughs> getting even shoes was tough for me as a lady. To a point I can remember we were, we were once playing basketball in high school. They even thought I was a boy. Like these girls just came <laughs> after my form for yeah. They used to think I'm a boy because I used to be very tall. Yeah. And then I was built like a boy. So And I used to score them very many goals. So they was like, ah, ah, coach, please go and check this lady. She, she, she's not a girl, she's a boy. Yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't this. So I used to feel different from my age mates mm -hmm. till, till I saw Ajuma. Yeah. Ajuma Sanyana, I was like, okay, <laughs> let the, all these people speak, but I'm unique. Okay. I am, I am, like, I can literally stand in town and I can see everything, like, going on. So, yeah, I'm in my own era, I'm breathing fresh air up there. <laughs> How tall is Ajuma, maybe, if you know? Uh, she's maybe, she's taller than me, I know. Oh, really? Yeah, she's taller than me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm, for me being able to breathe my own fresh air, <laughs> <laughs> Like even the sky is not even the limit for me, so <laughs> I just feel like unique, like like I'm watching for like there's just it's just so cool up there. I don't even know how to explain it. I've embraced it and but it, it kind of disturbed me with the relationships, I won't lie. Okay. Because some men feel insecure. Yeah. Some men feel intimidated by me. They like me but they are and, and then I'm always a a serious person before you approach me you know you have to like get into somebody's personal space to know them so they always like me but they're scared to approach mm -hmm. but they don't actually know that i'm i'm the the sweetest person they can ever meet but most of them are intimidated by my height so maybe i might like a guy but what what if he's not comfortable with my height yes. yeah so it's a challenge also when i'm dating but anyway the person who, who likes me, likes me. If, if they don't like me the way I am, I can't adjust or cut my legs to fit them. So, yeah, so I like myself the way I am. Yeah. You actually talked about uh, a few projects that you can be able to do uh, in Turkana. Maybe there's someone watching you, you know, from Kenya, from the US, from Dubai, just anywhere all over the world, and they'd really love, you know, to come through for you, support you in one of your projects. Uh, how would they reach you? My TikTok, uh, my, my social media platforms are everywhere. You can just, uh, you can, okay, TikTok for now is crowded because most of the people DMing me are just complimenting me. I not, not that I don't like the way they are complimenting me, but for business or support, DM me on Instagram. Yeah, on Instagram I reply faster. So if it's business or if it's, uh, you, you want us to work in any way, just DM me on Instagram. Uh, send me a message request and I will reply. Also on TikTok you can also, because before you also approach, you must also be able to see what I do. Mm -hmm. So you can, on Facebook, I'm also Lupita Nyakisumo. On TikTok, mm -hmm. Lupita Nyakisumo, Instagram the same. But for business and inquiries, Instagram, Lupita Nyakisumo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, apart from looking, uh, you know, like Lupita, would you say that in any way she ever inspired you, you know, after getting to know her, after now Googling her and getting to know who she is? Of course. Uh, if you look at also my TikTok, the, the, the image, the, the, the whatever video, the profile video on, of mine is her actu actually her video that she won the Oscar Awards. Yeah. yeah, so I also have this dream of, of becoming the second Lupita in this way, mm -hmm. I will carry the Kenyan flag high, like Lupita, but in modeling wise, not acting wise. Mm -hmm. There's a statement that she said, no matter where you come from, 
your dream is valid. That statement encourages me a lot, a lot, because I'm like, okay, I didn't believe it when I was still coming, coming like when I was still just rising, yeah. but now it makes sense. Just a, just a, a normal lady who, who, just a poor village lady, like I didn't even have anything. Mm -hmm. Now brands are looking for me, now companies are looking for me, like who am I? Yeah. It's just God. Do you ever wish to meet her? Of course, I will meet her. Mm -hmm. I will meet her. Okay. Yeah, I'm working on uh, projects abroad already. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure when I get to the US, mm -hmm. I will meet her. And when I meet her, I will. she will definitely know it's me. Yeah. Yeah. You talked about a few people, that is Akote, Mama Ida. Mama Ida, you also talked about um, Lupita. If maybe they stumble upon this video, you never know. <coughs> the beauty about the internet is that you never know. Yeah. So if maybe they stumble about, uh, you know, upon this video, what would you like them to know about you? I want them to know that uh, I have it in me to change lives. Either way, whatever way that whatever way that the Lord chooses me to go, I am ready to serve and I also believe that whatever I passed through wasn't sharpening me. That was God sharpening me for greatness. And I told God that I am ready to serve. Whatever support or anything they want to give me, I am ready to do it. I'm ready to serve this great nation. And if they could support me, I would be very, very, very honored to do that because that will be my dream coming to reality. I want before I leave this world someday, let it be known that there's something I changed in this country. Yeah. Amazing. And I've been having a conversation with Lupita Nyakisumo. And of course, uh, it's a very interesting conversation, you know, uh, for many people who have actually seen her. But then let me just ask uh, this quick question. Sometimes, uh, you know, the, the whole attention that you get, you know, on TikTok, people complimenting you, you know, people commenting on your videos, does it in any way get to you, you know, in the wrong way, like, ah, maybe this is too much, maybe you people are focusing on the wrong thing, you know, I'm trying to push the, maybe my project's agenda, but you people are focusing so much on Funny the way part. I look. Funny part, I don't even normally scroll the comments. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's something serious, if it's just, uh, if somebody said something nice to me, somebody who really means what they say, they will DM. As I say, TikTok is full of compliments. So I always just, <clears throat> what, the thing that, whatever I see that is making sense is what I will reply. Because I know if somebody is uh, maybe a brand or something, they know where to find me, they know how to find me. Somebody with serious will send you one message straight up saying whatever they want hi i am who and who i work with whatever i am interested in this 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 is my contact please reach out if you want in one message because they know they actually have just three opportunity three messages to send me because before i accept the message request so i just always just scroll because there are always so many i can't even you know but uh, i can't be whatever some people want me to be yeah, I also hear them. My manager actually is the one who always tells me those things because he feels that at times it's not good for my self-esteem. Yeah. So I can't be whatever you want me to be, but whatever the Lord wants me or what I, what I was sharpened to be. So maybe if, if what you're looking for in the media is not me, feel free to scroll up. Yeah. And for the people who are always looking up to, you know, your street videos, uh, should they ex uh, expect them to continue or do, do, do you in the future look at, you know, maybe stopping and shooting that, those videos? I've actually seen a lot of, I have uh, I've encouraged a lot of models. I'm seeing young upcoming models are also trying street shoot, which is okay. But they are a little shy. I'm seeing them doing them in, the st in, streets, but in streets, but in private streets they are tagging me in those videos i love i love the fact that i've also tried to inspire some people yeah so they they should continue doing it but what i would advise somebody to do if if you're doing modeling for fame or anything then you are in the wrong place because in kenya girl you will be used <laughs> runway modeling you will be used if you don't know your purpose don't do anything for desperation or for likes or anything whatever you see even these public figures that you see it's actually not that they're the best but the Lord knows that whatever they are doing, they're doing it for a purpose. So it's not all about trending. I mean, anyone can trend. You can just take a, a, a ring light and start doing your things and trend. It's not all about trending. It's about the Lord has searched your soul. And he has seen that, okay, before, before the, because the Lord will not give you anything before you are ready for it. 
you know. The Lord will never make it happen for you. Like you might be manifesting, for example, a car. But the Lord has seen it, that when he gives you that car right now, you are going to be reckless, you are going to even kill people with your car. So what will God do? The Lord will delay this and make you go through some painful things so that by the time you get that car, you know what to do with that car, you know. So the people, the ladies who are doing it, uh, I get some people are asking for street shoots, like can we do a collabo together? I'm asking myself, what is, I'm asking them, what is your vision? What is your end goal? What is your end goal with this? It's not all about, people will know you, but if people know you, in fact, you should be very, very keen about what people know you about because uh, all of these things are vanity if, if you didn't impact anything with them in your life. So it's not about trending. Have an end goal. Have a, have a key story. Have even a back story. Whatever you're doing, just push. One day when you finally get there, at least you have a story to tell somebody. You have, you, you have something to encourage somebody with. Somebody will be like, okay, if Nyakisumo did this, I can do this. If she passed through this, and I'm also going through this, let me not give up. But don't just wake up and take a ringlet and just start shooting yourself without a, a vision or anything. Have a vision. Actually, the ladies who are DMing me that they want us to do street shoots, I go through their social medias. Not that I don't want to do shoots with them, but I have not seen somebody who is still... Uh, yes, they will make it. Yeah. Even if you don't make it in modeling, there's something out there for you. There's something for, some, for everyone. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't make it in anything, you are still a queen wherever you are. Yeah. Thank you so much. Are you also looking at probably training uh, some models, you know, girls in around Turkana? When I get to Turkana, I will actually see whatever I can do with them. But I have my own agency, it's called Impress. Yes, I have my own modeling agency called Impress. So yeah, when I get there, I shall see whatever they have in store for me. And I will be happy to, to engage every single person from all walks of life and all groups of life. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been amazing getting to know you, you know, from seeing you on TikTok to ha actually having a good uh, and enlightening conversation with you guys. I hope you guys have actually enjoyed this interview. She's more than the beauty you see. She's more than the confidence you see. She's actually a star. The Lupita from Kisumu. Thank you so much for coming. Talk to your fans. Talk to everyone who comments on your videos. Talk to everyone who, to, uh, you know, who supports you in one way or another. So, hello Kenya. This is Lupita Nyakisumo, a street model who is very passionate about charity. Uh, for anyone wishing to support uh, my, my move or my brand, just reach me out on my socials, Lupita Nyakisumo. For the ladies that are uh, aspiring to be like me, it is possible, but you, will, you first have to be sharpened. In any way, the Lord might sharpen you or you might get somebody to sharpen you, but at the, at the end of the day, be focused, be disciplined, uh, don't allow yourself to be used in any kind of way, uh, you will surely get there. My haters, thank you so much because you're making it easy for me. I can't be whoever you want me to be, but the, the best version of myself. One thing about me, I don't fake my life to please anybody or to make anybody happy. If you don't like what I do, I'm sorry, but you also make things easy for me. I pray that the Lord gives you the, the soft heart. So it's okay. It's okay to hate. It's okay to... Yeah, but I'm just grateful for everybody. At the end of the day, I'm doing this for this great nation, Kenya. And I believe that one day, just like Lupita said, no matter where I come from, my dreams are valid. And one day I will stand before the nation and say, I did it. So, yeah. All the best. Thank you so much. I uh, mean, I to our presenter Ali, your entertainment PA. Come on, it is my hey interview. Mpaka Mwisho, I say Mina Kupenda Sana. And we have actually noticed that uh, majority of people are actually watching the videos, but they have not subscribed. So please do subscribe to our YouTube channel, Road to 450,000 subscribers. Uh, so keep subscribing. Behind the camera, we have Franka, the director. I'll see you guys in the next video.